Welcome back East Texas. We're joined now by Holly with Texas A&M AgriLife. Thank you so much for being here today. You bet. So we're in August now, which means school is pretty much almost here. And as parents and the kiddos get ready to get back into the routine, one question on a lot of parents' mind is when is my kid ready to ditch the booster seat? And you have all the answers for us. So thank you for helping us with that. So when is the right time? Okay, so um, Texas law states that um, a child has to be in a res child restraint until they're eight years old or four foot nine. Um, but the deal is, is once kids get past eight, a lot of times when they're eight, even nine, 10, maybe even 11, they may be too small for that vehicle seat belt in the car. So you really have to do a check on your own child after they turn eight, just because they turn eight is not necessarily the best time to, to ditch the seat. So what are some signs that your kid's ready to sit with a seat belt then? Okay, so you wanna put them in the vehicle um, seat in the car, um, have them scoot all the way back. You wanna make sure their knees go over the edge of the seat and their feet are flat on the ground. And when the shoulder strap comes across them, you want it to come straight across their, their shoulder. Sometimes it'll be too high, it'll mm -hmm. kind of cuddle across their neck. They don't want to flip it behind their back or under their arm because it's uncomfortable. And if they ride like that and you're in a crash, it could do some serious damage, some seatbelt syndrome problems. So we want them to ride um, correctly like that. If any of those things are not happening, then we need them back in a booster seat. So how do booster seats kind of help? What are the different ones I see have a couple here. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so the booster seat just boosts the kid up in the in the, the vehicle seat to fit with the seat belt. So our seat belts in our cars are made to protect adults very well, um, but they're not made to t protect kids. So we need the seats to, to add um, the extra height so it'll protect them the way it does an adult. So using the booster seat, it just boosts the child up in the vehicle that much where that, that seat belt is going to fit straight across the top of their hips and the seat, the shoulder strap's going to come right across their chest. That way it doesn't hit up here. Yes, yes. So they, um, so you can, this is, this one has a back on it, um, and then once they get older, you can, uh, you know, they may think this is more of a baby seat, and you can switch them over to something like this. They're very inexpensive. You can get them anywhere from 15 to, to $40, or more if you want it, the extra bells and whistles. So kind of as you're heading back to school, getting ready for a new semester, a new school year, some parents carpool. So how should you kind of work with that, you know, expressing to other parents, you know, my kid likes this one or doesn't like this one? How, how should you go about that? Absolutely, that's a great point, especially dropping off and picking up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, moms may drop off and not think about it, or, or dads, um, you know, who's going to pick up or what if they're going to have a seat available. You want to provide whoever's um, picking up that child a, a seat there, or you might can leave it there at the school in the office or something like that. But do make arrangements for them to have a seat available. All right, if people want to learn more about this or about Texas A&M AgriLife and what you guys do to help our East Texas communities, where can they find that information? Um, they can check us out on, with Family Community Health with Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service, or they can email me um, if they want um, their child safety seats checked at hdblack.ag.tamu.edu. All right, Holly, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you.